I'm pleased and honored to welcome my man, Jason Terry. What's happening, man? man? What's going on? In the zone, Yeah, baby. welcome to In the Zone. 19-year veteran. Yes, sir. NBA champion in 2011. You've been with Atlanta, Dallas, Boston, Brooklyn, and now, uh, well, Houston, and now Milwaukee. So uh, we, we glad to have you in here. Let's start with the current news in the NBA. We obviously saw Sunday LeBron James had this humongous performance against uh, the Boston Celtics Game 7. Some people, Jeff Van Gundy, some others are saying that was the best accomplishment. I think in 20, 2007, uh -huh. getting that team to the finals, beating Detroit was bigger. Uh, and I think his biggest accomplishment was 2016 when they came back from 3-1 down. Where do you stand on this being one of his greatest achievements? Well, I think you have a, a great point in all three emphasis, or I'm sorry, in instances, because in 07, at that age where LeBron was in his career, yep. to do that oh. with that team, I mean, that's a huge accomplishment. Yep. And so I think he, he still leans on that experience now that he's been now, what, eight times to the, to the, to the finals? Well, uh, nine, eight nine, straight. Eight straight, but, nine, but then yep. his ninth uh, finals appearance. And then yep. you said 2000, what'd you say, 2012? Uh, 2016, 2016 when he 2016, beat Golden State. When he yeah. came back against Golden State, nobody comes back in the NBA yeah. Finals down. Three never months. happened. Never yeah. happened, and he was the first to do so. Though he did have some help with Kyrie. J.R. Smith had an outstanding Finals, but uh, that was a huge feat in itself. But if you look at this roster and how it's constructed, or how it was built, yeah, yeah, how it yeah. was tore down and reconstructed, it's not very good. No. And so he, he's, he's had to carry them on his shoulders. He showed you last night, 48 minutes, almost another triple-double in uh, heroic fashion. Yeah, it, it wasn't a blowout. I mean, it was a tough game. It yeah. was hard fought. But he showed you why he is now in that conversation of being the greatest of all time. But I don't think uh, it will cement his legacy unless he wins this, the year. this year. And then if he does win, and I'll ask That's you this, huge. what does he do? Is it over? Cause for yeah, me, I know you've been saying all yeah, day. Yeah, I've been you saying think, it all day. I don't think so. You don't I don't think, think so? he walks away. Because, one, I think he got a lot of basketball yeah. left. And you know, I mean, you'll be 41 in September. Mm -hmm. you you going to be young. I mean, people think you as old for right. the NBA. Right. But whenever you retire, you still going to be a young man. So my thing is, if I'm an NBA player or NFL whatever, I'm playing until yes. I can't. Or, you know, until, like, like when LeBron is no longer a top 10 player or something, right, I can right. see him walking No away. doubt about it, and that's the difference between my career and his. Like at this point in my career, I'm a role player. Mm -hmm. I've accepted my role, impact in the locker room. Call on me, hey, I'll be there in the corner yep, ready to yep. shoot and make a shot. But for LeBron, you will never see him take that no. step backwards. Come off the bench. And some no. stars have, which is – Mm -hmm. it, 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 like Gary Payton yes. did it yes. when they, yeah, when in they beat us. 2006, when yep. they beat you guys. Vince Carter is doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but it is odd to see yeah. superstars play that no, role. No, it's no, rare that you see it. It's very rare, and, and it's humbling. But for a guy of his stature yeah, and no. where he's at in his career, no. And that's why it made me feel like after watching him, you see what he's been through. You see the pain. You see the frustration. But then you see also the – the deep breath, like, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. I had to do all this just to go, just to get there, just to get there, <laughs> not to win it all, yeah, yeah, but yeah. just to get there. And it's taken so much out of him over the last eight years. What he's been eight years now con consecutive, uh, he's won three out of five, yeah. which or th no, three out of eight, three out of eight. I'm sorry, three, three out, out of, of yeah, he's three and three, five, he's three and five. Yeah, so for me, that's like, damn, it's below average. I'm looking at my roster. I'm looking at the team. You know, it's going to take so much to put that team together. First of all, financially, how they're structured, it's yeah. definitely going to be hard to move those pieces. Oh, yeah. Then again, if you look at the pieces they're actually trying to move, those guys are <laughs> role players exactly. on a great team. Yep. yep. So, I mean, for him, he has a lot to think about. I mean, where he's at in his career, obviously his family situation, his kids are getting older. Yep. Uh, his home base now, obviously, I've seen the move. He got a big home now out here in L.A. He got a couple. Right. <laughs> so coming here to L.A., is that going to be any easier? If I was LeBron, first of all, we're going to find out what his motivation is. Mm -hmm. If it's winning, like if he's thinking, look, I really want to be the GOAT. He said it a few years ago, I'm chasing that GOAT in Chicago. Okay. If he's thinking, 
I'm, I want to be the GOAT. The only thing he can do is win, right? right. He's got all the individual stuff. No doubt about it's it. It's not going to be based on individual. So if it's winning, to me, go to Philly. Stay in the East. Stay in the East. Now, the reason I say that is because people close to him have told me he wants to play off the ball. Okay. Because I've said, I don't want him taking the ball out of Ben Simmons' hands. Right. And they said, nah, he wants to play off the ball. If he wants to do that, to me, it's a no-brainer. Because well, why come out west? Well, and then if you listen at that statement, play off the ball. Now, LeBron James off the ball when I've had the ball in my hands for 15 years. Yeah, it ain't easy. It it's easier good. said than done. Right. right. <laughs> but it's kind of like if you I look at Chris you. Paul and James Harden situation now. Everybody thinks Chris Paul's coming to the team. James is going to play off the ball. Oh, no. James hadn't changed anything. Hasn't changed one right? bit. Chris has changed, Chris and has I give changed. him credit because no I didn't think Chris could do this. Not at all, but I, I think what Chris has done is he's just picked his spots a little yeah. better. And so that's when you look at that series. I know we're fast forward, but we look at that series, and if he's not here tonight for this game seven, it's going to be a real struggle. Because oh, if you yeah. watch James, it, it brought back old memories for me. I played in Houston. We went to the Western Conference yep. Finals yep. when James was the m- majority ball handler. Yep. And he just gets fatigued. Out I was going to ask you, what games. is it? Because we saw it last yes. year against San Antonio, yep. game six. You think that's what it is? It's not mental, no. it's just fatigue? There's only one guy built to last in this league. Well, there's two. It's Russell Westbrook <laughs> and LeBron James. Yeah. Physically, these guys' endurance is off the charts. I've been in this thing 19 years now. I have not seen anyone better. AI that's was genetic. the only other guy genetically that could run around like this and play 48 minutes, and you're like, man, he's still as fresh as he yeah, was in the yeah, first yeah. five So that's the not a matter of they just condition more. That's some of that. Obviously, I they do great of, conditioning. Yeah, I think some of but, it is, is their workout routine and how they maintenance their body. I mean, okay. obviously, LeBron's a freak. He's different, you know, at 6'8", yeah. and then his, his body is uh, – I don't even know the word of it, but – it's well proportioned. Okay. Like his okay. muscle not structure. The legs aren't yeah, it's not too top long heavy. Or, like yep. she's big bodybuilders, top heavy, legs skinny. Yeah. No, yep. he's well proportioned. Russell Westbrook, well proportioned. James Harden, if you look at his build, he has that body type, but he would have to implement the same routine. I don't know if it's diet. I don't know if it's yeah, like LeBron, yeah. they ride the bike crazy. What was Harden's diet but, like when you were in Houston with him? That was he, a few he, years he, ago. he was pretty good because he was changing at that point. Uh, he had already had some success. And you got to remember, my two years in Houston, he easily could have been the MVP. I, I voted for him in 2015. Okay. see, yeah. and, and, and the players. Remember, that's when the, the players, players voted, voted for him. For him. Yeah. And, and But Steph had. Phenomenal yep. years. And then Russell had the year he had. Yeah. So, but I think at that point he was just now transitioning to eating right. Okay. He would lift post game. You know, that that gives you oh, a little more endurance. Post really? game. It gives you recovery when you lift okay. post game. Okay. And so he started to pick up that regimen and I was like, oh, he's changing. Yeah. And yeah. you could see it in his game. He started to be unguardable. Like before he had the little foul move, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, cute. Yeah, 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 and they yeah, caught yeah. on to it. Yeah. But now he's he's really come into his own, man. He's learned how to get off the ball and save some of that energy. But again, he got Chris Paul. Yeah. And if you've seen in the second half of game six, he was dominant oh, on yeah. the ball in the third quarter, he started to have turnovers and he was taking bad shots. Yep. Yep. Went downhill quick. And that's it's tough. People see their ISO and obviously with his handle, his feints and all that, he can get he's great yeah. ISO. You can't guard him. But that's tiring. Yeah. To do that to 20 times a game. Exerting a lot of energy. Yeah, that's unnecessary out energy that you're exerting. That if you watch the way Golden State plays, those guys is free flowing. You mm-hmm. know, Kevin Durant falls into it every now and then. It's hard not to. I'm seven feet. He's six two. I mean, yeah, give me the yeah, rock. Yeah, Let yeah, me go yeah. to work. Well, that's. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up because I think the reason Golden State's struggling in this series. Mm-hmm. I mean, Houston's great. Give yeah. me credit, but I think they have fallen too much into ISO post up Durant because, like you say, he's so great. And I even think the teammates. Oh yeah. Are like they throw it to him. Exactly. They're a little in awe of his greatness. But what makes them special is, like you said, the free-flowing yes. offense. Yes, And that's the battle there. If they go yeah. back into the ISO in Game 7, yeah. we're doing this before Game 7, uh, they could lose, I think. If they play their game, I don't think they can lose. I don't think they'll lose, but I think it will be close if they go into the ISO yeah. one-on-one matchup. Yeah. But I just think right now they're heated up. 
I mean, Clay found his rhythm. Curry oh, found yeah. the one that was struggling was Curry. You got to remember the first two games of this series. Durant was averaging thirty plus. Yeah, he was carrying plus. them. He was, he was carrying them in those same ISO situations, yeah. shooting a high percentage, very efficient. But Curry just didn't find his stroke. Now he's found his stroke. And if, you know, our thing about Curry was was physically. What was he hurt? Was he injured? Well, that's the thing, right? Yeah. I mean, when because every playoffs, like I've been like, I don't even want to hear no. about no health. Because when he plays well, nobody's thinking about it. Nobody himself. said nothing. Right, but it's every postseason. Yep. So I, I, he's probably a guy like you mentioned, Harden. Yep. And I, I know Steph works hard, but Jordan even said it. He said mm -hmm. when Detroit kept beating him in the playoffs. He's like physically, I couldn't yeah. just sustain it mm -hmm. over the course of a seven game series. So he had to start working out more. So I think Steph's gonna probably yeah. have to do that too. Eventually he will have to do it. And because he shoots a lot of jump shots, that's very it's very important that he develops this lower body strength. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I learned later on in my career um, as I got older and Jason Kidd came to our team. He would be lifting on his legs on game days. I'm like, on what game are you doing? Days. But you're thinking, okay, he's lifting on his legs. He's not squatting three and four hundred pounds. Yeah. He's doing functional weight. Okay. You know, just strengthening and making sure all the muscles and joints are moving fluidly. So like after shoot yeah, around. Yeah, after shoot like around, that. nice little lift. Wake the legs up, so to speak. And so those are some of the things that um Curry will have to do. It's called preventative maintenance. Yeah. And, and yeah. You, you implement that into your regimen. Um you know, Do but, you think we will find out tonight? Monday night, who wins this series? Mm -hmm. You think Cleveland has a chance against either? I'm hoping Houston. I love Golden State, but I'm hoping Houston wins just so we might have a competitive series. Because I don't think Golden State will be competitive. Um, I, I, I'm like you. I don't think Golden State will be competitive. I think Cleveland, if it's Golden State, wins one game, probably at home. At best, baby. At yeah. best. Uh, if, it, if it's Houston, the reason why I say Houston is a little more competitive series is because they have multiple defenders that can guard LeBron. All right, and then the style of play is such that if you get into a up and down race with them, it's going to be a long with Houston. night with Houston because yeah. that's what they thrive on. And then again, with LeBron's team, they have to play in transition. That's the only way they turned around that series that's against the only Boston. Way those guys yeah, that's the only way the other guys can get off. Uh, they got to get out in transition and, and get open shots, but. Uh, again, you never want to bet against so you, the King. Okay. Yeah, so you would give him a shot yeah, against Houston. I'd give him a Houston. shot against Houston. But Golden State, that's just – and yeah. Golden State's confidence against them. They know yeah. LeBron has to guard KD. Yep. There's no matchup, yep. matchup problem they for them. They, they own them. They own them. They, they own them right now. They own them. All right. Now, you guys faced Boston, lost in seven yes. in Milwaukee. So it was close. Let me ask you this. If Kyrie's playing for the Celtics, are they going to the finals or does Cleveland still beat them? You know what? I give the edge to to Boston, because if you look at what Boston was missing, it was that guy that could get his own shot. Yep. Now Jason Tatum is phenomenal. He will be a Celtic legend for years to come. Well, I'm, I want to ask you that because yes. okay, how good? Like we talking Paul George yep. good? We talking Kevin Durant good? We talking in between? What do you think? Listen, I'm talking better than Paul George for sure. Okay. Uh, because he still hasn't I tapped into what he that. can do yep. defensively, right, with his length. He yep. doesn't even know that aspect of the game yet. But offensively, I mean, he, he's a mix, man. He has a little bit of T-Mac in him mm. because he can handle it and he can handle yep. in pick-and-roll situations. Athletically, I mean, he's... He, he doesn't have the super bounce, but as you've seen against LeBron, <laughs> if he attacked the basket, yeah, he can still LeBron raise up on you. Like that. But, I mean, his jump Ooh. shot, too, you give him Kevin Durant's jump shot, yeah. he has that type of range. And so, you know, I watched this kid since he was a sophomore in high school, and I knew it then. I said, physically, he has the tools to play in the NBA. And it's just a matter of him getting that strength. I mean, he doesn't have the grown man strength. So yet. superstar, he's so gonna be a superstar. superstar. He'll be a superstar, especially for that organization. Yeah, yeah. It's one that they'll breed him to be that superstar. Wow. And with a guy like Kyrie, all the pressure won't just be on him. Yep. He'll yep. be allowed to play with that freedom, and that's why you've seen the growth and development in Jalen Brown, who in the last two years he's has tough. continued to grow and develop. Now they'll have a decision to make because both of them play the same position. Well, I think they'll, like, the way I see it, they should just have Kyrie at the point, Jalen Brown at the two, mm -hmm. Jason Tatum at, 
I guess if they bring back Gordon Hayward next year at the four, Tatum at the four, Ooh. Hayward at the three, and right. Horford at the five. Well, within this day and era, you get away with that because yeah, you, know, you need ball. the stretch yep. four, small ball. Yep. And uh, they, they'll really stay away from that lineup that I hate and that I thought that's why we would win with Baines and Horford. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody yeah. plays like that anymore. <laughs> like that just was disappointing yep. for me. But I thought we should have won that series. Uh, don't count Milwaukee out. I mean, they got a young core. Great coach in Budenholzer. Yeah. He has a system that if he implements it and allows Giannis to continue to develop his outside game, uh, Milwaukee's going to be a tough out. So you got three young teams. And, and then Toronto, what's Toronto going to do? Are they going to get a coach? They disappointed me yeah. uh, because you thought this was the year they'd take that next step. At least be competitive but, with but, Cleveland. But be competitive. Don't get swept two They years just were shook to me. Not, not with two. I got to use this lightly. I love, I love uh, Kyle Lowry. DeRose is a superstar. We know that. Yeah. But if he doesn't play in the fourth quarter of a game, there's something wrong with that. Well, did you see? I, I looked at that like, I mean, they came back without him. Yeah. And he was, I think he had 13 points maybe. He yeah. wasn't playing well. At 13 points, they made a run. But at some point, you got to put your best five players on the floor and make a run at it. Yeah. That didn't happen. Now, again, we're not over there. We're not on the sidelines. Uh, obviously, he had, they had a better field than we do. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and I just think that in itself got them swept because that next game, he, 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 yeah, he, he just didn't done. bounce. He, he was shell shot. So, but, uh, I'm with you, though. That's the one. Eastern Conference, though, for yeah. you in a nutshell. <laughs> no, it's some, it's no, some you're good right. young talent. It's better. It's getting better. It's Everybody's getting better. mocked the East for a while. Yeah. It's going to be good. Let me ask you this quickly about Milwaukee. Did Jay Kidd, Jason Kidd get a raw deal? Uh, I'm not necessarily going to say it was a raw deal. I think it mutually they just chose to separate. I mean, as you've been along together for so long, uh, mutually philosophies differ. Okay. Uh, the ownership group probably was on one page. We just hired a new GM. He probably had another. And then J.K. obviously had the division in his mind yeah. of where he wanted the team to go personnel-wise. And me being in there on a day-to-day -day basis, being in the meetings, coaches' meetings, uh, he allowed oh, me. Oh, so you were in the good. He, he allowed me to do so. Um, I know there was a difference of opinion when it came to personnel. And so that's probably where the split was. So he can't, you, any when, coach can't yeah. be happy when management is trying to tell you who to play. No, no yeah. doubt about it. You, 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 it's, it's hard because it's a difference of opinion. And at the same time, as a coach, you coach the team. You're there on a day-to-day -day basis. You see how it works. Ownership is up in the booth. They can see the stat sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they got to be in the trenches. Yeah. If you're not at practice and you're not on the sidelines, you just don't know what's going on. But at the same time, hey, you own the team. You can do whatever you want. Because I've been with Mark Cuban. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah. been in the huddle. He'll be. He'll come in the locker room and tell you, look. And I, give strategy. And give strategy and tell you. I'm going to give you one example. We're in Sacramento. We're on like a, a five-game road trip. Two games we blew. Second game we're in, or third game we're in Sa Sacramento. We're not playing well at all. Yeah. He came right in. You getting your check on time? You getting your check on time. Dirk, did you get paid? It was the 15th <laughs> yesterday. And we're like, yeah, everything good. Well, y'all need to start playing like it. And if you don't, Jet, I'm sending you to Portland. Dirk, <laughs> I'll send you out of here, too. You're not untouchable. And we're like, damn, I'm cute. Now we go out and we lose the game anyway. But we were like, <laughs> for him to come in, yeah, he yeah, was that yeah. invested. And that's what you want to see from your ownership group. And I think Milwaukee, not, not, there's nothing bad about them. They, they have done that now. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're very visible and they're hands-on. Are they... Are they bringing in analytics and stuff and uh, saying no this is why? Obviously, they're using no them, doubt about but when it. they point to why you should play so and so, is, is that what they're pointing to? I think that's 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 part of it. They're they're going to implement that in in any decision that they make now. I mean, why, how can you not? You want to use every advantage you can get. I think the point in case is in Houston. I mean, that's his whole yeah. game, right? He's huge at analytics. Yep. The only disagreements I have is when you got the third all time shooter in the history of the game, why <laughs> would you right. ever You're not have them on you? a roster where that's what you need? For this team. For this team. Yeah. I'm perfect. Yeah. But that's all, yeah, it's all good. It ain't no hard feelings. Well, so, uh, speaking of that, let me ask you this. If LeBron were to go to Philly, yes. they obviously going to need shooting. Yeah. Would you look at that and say, I'll go there for the vest minimum? Uh, no doubt about it. You would, have to, you would have to take an honest, honest look at that because any team LeBron is on, first of all, is a team for a shooter like myself yep. is a luxury. You go in there and all you need to do is get to your spots, he'll find you. I mean, nobody's benefited more greatly than that than Kyle Korver and J.R. Smith. Yep, that's uh, right. You do know. you look at them and say, 
I know Kyle, you thinking oh. you can still do that. Oh, I envy him. I'm like, man, come on, man. Please let me run around and get to my spot right. and just sit there and wait. Uh, because, again, it's a luxury, man. That man has the, the best basketball IQ we've seen in a long time. And his ability to make players special is his probably his strongest attribute. So where do you stand on everybody asks the GOAT conversation? I've been mm -hmm. listening to you on Undisputed and the Herd. You've been dropping hints that you think he's the GOAT, if, if, if not more than hints. Nah, I'm a Jordan guy. <laughs> Look at your shoes. Yeah, I'm right. a Jordan guy. I'm a Jordan guy, no doubt about it. It's something to be said about getting to the NBA Finals and never losing. Yes. He's, he's never lost. Regardless of who's been on his team or what we can say, who he played against and all that, He's gotten there, he's won, he hasn't lost. LeBron's record in finals, he's under 500. Yep. I mean, so are we just giving out trophies for just getting there? The yeah, last I'm time I checked, no. Nah. Yep. They won't say Carl Malone's the greatest power forward. Why? Because he's never won a championship. That's right. Charles Barkley, same thing. Yep. So we can't give a guy the greatest of all time. Now, he's great. I mean, he's top three in my book. For yeah, sure. I got him number two. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Especially after this season. You, now you gotta put him up. Most there. ex players, mm -hmm. I, and I, I know you're not an ex player, but most ex players, and they're a lot of them your age oh, or a yeah. little, little younger, they seem to put Kobe ahead of LeBron. Doesn't get enough respect, if you ask me. And because I've played in both uh, eras right now, um, and I, I matched up against Kobe, I just, it's funny, man. I'm watching a VHS tape in my office the other day. I had 36 on Kobe. It was beautiful. Did you? I was wearing it out. <laughs> He and he was guarding. They was in Atlanta. It was one of them road trips, probably a back-to-back. -back. He was guarding me, but he wasn't really into it. <laughs> he tried to turn it on too late, and we got him. And, man, that was like our season. We thought we had won a championship. <laughs> but, but, but anyway, playing now, against, Atlanta, So that was early in yeah, your career. Yeah, that was early in my career. Yeah. It was my fourth. Uh, actually, it was my second season, uh, and I was in Atlanta. But I had a lot of freedom then. Boy, I was, whoo, <laughs> a lot of freedom. But, anyway, my point is that Kobe – Okay, he played with Shaq, won three championships. But then he was without Shaq, yeah. he won two. Yeah. That's a five-time champion. And don't forget he was all NBA defense oh, yeah. every single year, right? So, you, I mean, it's hard to deny a man that gives you that, that kind of stat. And then his killer instinct, I mean, he was a killer. And the difference between those guys uh, and LeBron, they're 6'6". Six, six. 6'5". Mm -hmm. Kobe might be 6'5"-ish mm -hmm. right in there. Mm -hmm. Him and Mike, they play shooting guard. LeBron's a, a, a small forward, power forward and uh, at his position. So, I mean, it's hard to say one guy's better than the other, but you got the five championships. Kobe, one of the greatest scorers we ever had in our game. Uh, I definitely got him top five. Nobody okay. gives Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I mean, he dominated every era he was in. Yep. Yeah, I got Kareem three. You got Kareem Behind three. LeBron. That's good. See, we on the same level. <laughs> so anybody that's in the top five right there, you can't lose. Yeah. But Mike, for me, because of what he did for our game, uh, where it was at to where it is now, it's definitely because of Mike. Oh, now, yeah. Magic and Bird can have a say to that as far as marketing and advertising yeah. these players. But Jordan, he escalated it. He took it to somewhere that a stratosphere that nobody ever did, did movies, uh, owned shoes. Yeah. He owned it. He owned it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Still, they still We're the most wearing shoes. shoes that he put out 30 years ago, and they sell it for three <laughs> times as much money. You can go right. for that. That's right. I got to see LeBron's shoe sales in about 30. I mean, we ain't going to just base it on that, but I got to see his <laughs> shoe sales in 20 years, man. It's going to be amazing. Now, you, I'm going to go on a little tangent. You brought up Atlanta when you played there, mm -hmm. and that Atlanta is known as – Dudes might not come out and play well to, when they there at all. <laughs> so tell me why, it, how you can tell. Like dudes, just you know when they go to Atlanta, they're gonna be kicking it all night. We got the greatest night. evidence right in front of us. And if I'm not a hockey fan, you may be. But look at Las Vegas, what they doing in their first yeah, year of existence. Yeah. <laughs> Teams just coming in there. They are in the finals in their yeah. first year of existence. That has never been heard in professional sports. Yeah, it's amazing. But it's home court advantage. The nightlife is great. I mean, being a young kid at at 20 years old. I'm sorry, dang, what was I, 23 years old, going into Atlanta, playing in a city that, I mean, it, it, it was black Hollywood when yeah, I came through. Yeah. It was always something to do every night of the week. You heard the J.D. song, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was something to do. Yeah. And there still is. And I think a lot of guys in this league, if you're playing in a city like Utah, or Sacramento, and you only get one trip to Atlanta, you're definitely going to hang out. At least go have a good meal. Yeah. And if there's something going on that night, you'll go partake in it. 
Now, it's on you to be professional because our era, you can party till the sun come up. But when that ball tips off at 730, you better be ready to go. And all of us did. We were all professional. Let me ask you about that because I, I know one reason they implemented shoot around year, decades mm -hmm. ago was that because coaches wanted to get players up early and not yeah. let them sleep all day because they've been hanging out. When, when guys are hanging out to three, four in the morning, mm -hmm. whatever, doing whatever they do, how tough is it when you got to get up for, what, nine o'clock or whatever and get to that shoot around? Yeah. Is that really a hassle? Because it seems like it would be a hassle to me. Well, for me, it's, it's not when you understand your priorities. When you prioritize correctly and you understand this is a job, this is a business. And when your business is basketball, you're going to go out and prepare and do what you need to do to be ready for that game that night. And that's why I said our generation, it didn't matter. You can hang out till 4 or 5 in the morning, not sleep, go to shoot around, sleep the rest of the that's day. That's what guys will do. Sleep, yeah, okay. sleep the rest of the day. <laughs> but you knew you needed shoot around so you can sweat. So you can get your body moving. So I can definitely get some shots up yeah. just to feel good. Boom, go shower, lay down, get a good meal. Now you're back ready, rejuvenated, regardless of what you did the night before. Okay. Now I see that ring, man. First of oh, all, that man. is humongous. Appreciate it. That I've seen some bigger ones. Boy, Della Dover, man, I'm, I'm, man, they get bigger and bigger really? every year. I'll tell you, That's you got a four, you remember the old school four finger rings? I think you got yeah, a picture yeah, back yeah, there, Jay-Z yeah. got it on. <laughs> That's what Della Dover ring looked like. <laughs> really? I, mean, I wanted to turn mine in and, and get a new one. <laughs> Shoot, man, I'm about to redo this thing. But How no. often do you wear it? You know, I usually try to wear it when I'm, when I'm doing either analyst work or broadcasting. Uh, and I also wear it around this time of year. Uh, just because it's so special to me. Now I have one that I wear, and then there's one that I so I you keep got in a, two right, and I keep one in a, in a trophy case. So, did you do that yourself, or did the team give y'all that? You, okay, because okay. I knew I wanted to wear one. Yeah, and yeah. I won in college. My college one, I wore it out. Really, I didn't redid it twice, but I wow. because I always want people to know. Yeah, like, yeah. Like that yeah. was the hardest thing for me to do was win a national championship because it's one game. Is that out. harder than winning an NBA championship? Ooh. It's, it's pretty tough, but being on both ends of the NBA one, losing it and then winning it, NBA's tough, man, because, again, you're playing against the best of the best. College is more the luck of the draw yeah, if you yeah, get a yeah, good draw, yeah. and we didn't necessarily have a good draw. We knocked off three number one seeds to do it, and so that, that was tough, and I think there's only been one other team to do so since, but you're young and you don't know any better. Yeah, you're just yeah, playing yeah. and having fun. But the NBA, the pressure's there. The media's there. The light, the, the lights are brighter. Um, I would imagine in college you need more luck. Just even if yeah, you're the best team, you need luck because it's one and done. And you have to be playing your best because in the NBA, if you don't play your best game one, you still got game yep, two. Yeah, yeah. And so I mean, and you can learn from your experience. Like game one, okay, now we can adjust. Game two and do some. There is no adjustment. If you didn't adjust at <laughs> halftime of that college game, <laughs> you, in you was going on. <laughs> you know, and I, I've been in that situation. The year we won it, man, the first round, hardest round. We're down ten with two minutes left. Who were y'all playing? We were playing uh, South Alabama. So they that, had to be a low seed. They they were what, low. What were y'all seeded? We were like, I mean, we took fifth in the Pac-12. I mean, we might. Oh, have so y'all were a low we were seed. Low. We probably were. Seed seven or six okay so it was a close yeah, okay so it was, it was i mean it was a barn burner man but i always remember that experience because nobody picked us to win and we felt like man we got just as much talent as anybody else mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. early on we were beating folks but we just had a bad the pac-12 was tough back then or pac-10 i'm sorry it was yeah, tough yeah. back <laughs> then and so but we came together at the right time and we'll never forget it and i see those guys now mike bibby miles simons coaching in l.a yeah, now yeah. And we just look and we smile, man, because we share a special bond that, that nobody can even think of and imagine. Now, that ring, of course, from 2011 when you were at the Dallas Mavericks, y'all beat mm -hmm. uh, LeBron and the Miami Heat. Uh, that was his first run of, for, of this seven, eight years straight. That yep. was the first time. Um, that's viewed as the low point of his career, you know, and wow. he, when he kind of was melting down. Yeah. So they're up 2-1. When did you first recognize something's wrong with LeBron James? He, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yep. this is not the the LeBron James. Well, if that was a low point in history, it was definitely low in mine because we're down 2-1. I hadn't performed the way I wanted, thought I should have been performing. Okay. He was guarding me, 
And all I'm hearing at practice is Dirk, because Dirk has had no sugar coat. I mean, if he came in, the bums ain't doing what they got to do. Really? That's why we ain't winning. Oh, what? Oh, Dirk was oh, like that. Dirk was cold. <laughs> now, he wouldn't, in the media, he kind of stayed away yeah. from it, but he would let you know straight up, man, you're not doing it, bro. And he would say the bums. The bums, the burgers. <laughs> like, it, I mean, it was no filter. And so you're looking like, man, all right. And my lock was always next to his, so, I mean, he was on me. It was 2-1, and he knew, like, if we were ever going to win a championship, this was the time to do it. Jets, you ain't showing up. We need you. Wow. And then so the media caught wind of it, and they're like, yeah, LeBron is, is, is locking you up. You, you, you can't get your stuff off. What's going on? I said, well, he can't keep up with me for seven games. I'm I remember you, you yeah, said that. And I'm just that. letting you know, like, honestly, he can't. Mm -hmm. Because I knew physically his strength was not chasing and running yep. off of screens. And I thought if we did that more and implemented it a little more in our game plan, then he would, he would struggle a little bit. So it probably was game five. So they it was 2-1. We win game four. But game five, it was a point in the fourth quarter. They called timeout. We had just went on the run. LeBron is, had his back to the stanchion. Everybody else had walked to the bench, but he was still out there. And I kind of looked back, and he had his chin in his chest, and he was just doing this, and he was deep breath. And I looked. And I kind of smiled like, <laughs> yeah, he's wore out. Wow. He, he, he didn't have no more left. And it was because we had multiple defenders. We were picking him up full court. We weren't letting him get to his isolation game. We're making him shoot jump shots. If he drove it and, and he had a clear path, we were wrapping him up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, give credit to Deshaun Stevenson, Sean Marion, even Jason Kidd was guarding him. And then we had a zone defense. Dwayne Casey takes a lot of credit. Yep. Uh, and he's rightfully so because he deserves it. And, and LeBron gave him some love. Yep. He oh, said, yeah. I, I, I developed my outside perimeter game because of your defensive strategy in that series. And so that was it. Game five, I seen it in his eyes. So to you, it was more of a physical, he just got worn down. Yeah. Most people look it at was, it as mentally he well, wasn't. Well, yeah. physically, Yes, but mentally, definitely what I seen in okay. his eyes. Yes, that, that, it was mental at that point. Like, whew, we were up 1-0. Even in game two, we were up 10, yeah. 12 points in the last three minutes, and they came back and beat us. Then we win on their court. That's a breaking point in a series. To win that first game on the opposing team's court mm. on the road, that's like a breaking point. But we come back and answer the bell, and we beat them in game four. Damn, they ain't going to go away. And then game five, they had fought as hard as they could, and we kind of – I hit the shot over him. It's probably in my career to this day, if you want to say LeBron's defining moment was the block he had on uh, yeah, Golden State, yep. mine's was the hesitation pull-up on the right wing in Dallas uh, to kind of put us up four and, and propel us to victory in game five. That was my defining moment. And then to see his reaction after that shot, he was like, man, they ain't going away. Even though we're going home, because remember yeah. the series is two three yep. two, and so we had to go there for two games. You would think like mentally, damn, we got two at home, we cool. Yeah, but it, it, you, you could see you it. could see it. They they weren't cool, and they knew we were gonna give them everything we had in game six because we did not want it to go to seven. Now I heard from one of your teammates, ex teammates, mm -hmm. that you were talking major trash oh. to LeBron. You and Sean Marion, I heard. To everybody. It did not matter. If you had on a Heat jersey, because you got to remember me. Like, 05, 06, Miami just crushed every – I was supposed – I tell everybody to this day, if that's if we win that series, Jason Terry is the MVP of the series. 06. 06. Y'all yeah. y'all, weren't up 2-0. I, I don't ever toot my own horn, by the way. <laughs> but we were up 2-0. You were up 2 I and was 3 having quarters. A phenomenal. Oh. <laughs> Phenomenal. 30 in the first game, 18 in the next, 30 in game three. I mean, I'm balling. Like, I done dunked on Shaq. Everybody want to talk about when LeBron dunked on me? Shaq, I got the footage. Now, I stepped on we you. We're going to show some of that footage But I on banged this. it. Boom. In the finals, yeah, first time yeah. ever, I mean, I'm in a dream. Now I see the T-Mobile commercial right after the finals. D-Wade got the T-Mobile phone. I mean, I sit there all summer like that this, was man. You. That was me, man. But then to get my chance again in 2011, man, it was sweet vindication for me. So, um, again, I love it, winning it, but losing it still resonates even more to me. I want to get to all that. I want I want to stay in 06 or get back to 06 quickly. Mm -hmm. But first, in 11, so were you a trash talker throughout your career? Or yeah, you just, yeah. just for that series? Yeah, I think who my role just, model, my idol was, Gary Payton. 
Okay. I, I was okay. raised in Seattle. I grew up. GP would be at all my high school games. I would be at Key Did you know him? Because yeah. Because I know he played at Oregon. I knew him, but the only reason why I knew him was because he would come oh, to the games. Because he was playing with the yeah, Sonics. Yeah, and he would always. So there was a place called the Seattle Pro Club. This is where all the Sonics worked out. Back when Xavier McDaniel, Dale Shrimp, Dale Ellis, uh, Byron Houston, GP, yep, Sean yep. Kemp, they would all come up there and work out in the summer. But they would let guys like the local kids like myself come and work out with them. And I was like, man, this is like the coolest thing ever. Yeah, like, I watch y'all on TV, but y'all going to let me hoop with you? Cool. So you playing in scrimmages. Yeah, really? we scrimmage. We school? getting it in in the summer. Now, now are they going school. at y'all? Oh, they going at it. GP talking trash. <laughs> Young boy, what you think this is? Boy, you going to get your whooping today. I mean, it's just, oh, man. He talking to whoever will listen. And so... <laughs> I was like, man, that's so cool. I like, I like that. Because he's backing it up. Yeah, yeah, Like, the yeah, one thing yeah. about talking trash, you can talk all the trash you want, but if you're trash, nobody's listening. Yeah. He would back it up. And no, so for me, the defining moment, which made me want to idolize GP, is when he went up against Mike. I said, GP talked to you. Let me see if he going to talk stuff to yeah, Michael yeah. Jordan. <laughs> Nobody talks to Mike. He's sitting there wagging his head. He talking to him. They take him to six games. I'm like, yo. I want to be like GP. I don't care. I'd be like Mike all day, but GP is your man, yo. Now, they didn't win the series, yeah, but yeah, I just yeah. respected the fact that he felt that confident in his game that he'll go up against yep. the greatest, and he never backed down. Yeah. So did you feel like, because, again, I heard it was you and Sean Marion. Yep. Did you feel like y'all got into LeBron's head with the talk? I, I, I don't think we, he really even paid attention then to it. I mean, it was just something that me and Sean, I mean, we in the class of 99, that's just something we yeah, did. Okay. Like, we didn't care if it was LeBron or somebody else, and it wasn't personal. Yeah. It was just like we knew, like psychologically, at that point in his career, he wasn't as mentally tough as he is now. And so we wanted to do anything, like we would cheap shots, talk stuff, yeah. anything we can do to, to try to get under his skin and rattling. And um, now, did that work? Who knows? Yeah. But I know mentally he was fatigued by the end. And you got to remember why he was fatigued. The whole parade, the oh, expectations, yeah. beating Boston. Yep. Like, Boston like really did the for job them, for us. That was the win. Yeah, that, that was, was the win. Thinking, did you yeah. see them after? I mean, guys was falling out on the court. <laughs> they was, And we're watching it because we had already took care of our business. We yeah. beat them 4-1, Oklahoma City. So we just watching like, okay. Yeah, they think they already won the chip. Mm, they ain't mm. even looking at us. And everybody says it. We were the dark horse. And I think LeBron has only been favored in the finals. I heard a stat today is twice. And one of them, and one of them against us. So, yeah, yeah. There you have it. Wow, wow. So let's look at 06 then. Because mm -hmm. like you said, y'all were up. I, I covered that series. Oh, man. It, like I said, it wasn't just 2-0. Y'all were up 13, I think, with six <sighs> minutes left in the fourth quarter of game three. So what happened? Dwayne Wade went to the free throw line it more times yeah. than Michael Jordan in the history of the NBA Finals. <laughs> to this day, he still has the record. Yep. Why he shot so many free throws, I don't know. But I can go it, it back to one possession for sure that I know. Didn't nobody touch that boy. As a matter of fact, he stiff-armed me because I tried to double-team him. I <laughs> fell down. That was an offensive foul. Then he goes to the whole trips, throws something up, and they called another foul. So at that point, we're like, okay, we're playing against seven players. You felt, y'all felt oh, that 100%. during the series. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you look at, at it, honestly, at that point, um, we did it to ourselves because you're up 2-0. You're up in a, in a game three where they had a lot of dysfunction going on. And you could see it. I mean, those guys were arguing and stuff really? in the huddle, in the timeouts. So you could see that. Yeah, you could okay. see it. GP and, and, and uh, I think it was GP and maybe, I don't want to say Jay Will, but it was one of the other veteran guys. And they okay. were going back and forth. It was heated. It might have been Antoine Walker. They were kind of heated. And we're like, damn, man, they about to break over there. Man, we got them. Yeah. But he just kept going to the free throw line. And it was, yeah, we like, man, yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay, okay, cool. Okay, we didn't win game three. Get to game four. Shaq goes up. Stackhouse clotheslines him. It's flagrant. Yeah. But it's not really like, okay, that's Shaq. Like, Shaq, yeah, you he's can't a really knock dude. Shaq yeah. out. It's like LeBron now. If you hit yeah. him, like, okay, that's not a flagrant, though. It's just a good playoff foul. He gets ejected. He's our sixth man of the year. We're counting on him 15 mm -hmm. to 20. Mm -hmm. So we don't have him for game five. Game five was close. I missed the game winner. Uh, so at that point, it's like, man, mentally we are in – uh, shamble. Not to mention, while we were in Miami, we were in South Beach for like a week and a half. It felt like a month. 
There's now two, I remember three, two format. Avery moved y'all. Avery yes. Johnson was the head yes. coach. You moved y'all from downtown to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Did that have any impact, good it, or bad? Psychologically, it, psychologically, it, it wore on us because now you took us out of our, our original routine. Your routine in the NBA is ain't no roommates. This ain't college. So now we're y'all we, had roommates. We, we had roommates. We're thirty miles away. We're with a guy we've never hung out with, and so and I get the strategy. So he made so originally in Miami. Mm -hmm. Where y'all y'all were in South Beach. Y'all didn't Beach, have roommates. We're, we're on Brickell Avenue. You by yourself. Yes. You're in your regular routine. The family is definitely at the hotel. Everybody's hanging out. We're having a good time. You're up 2-0. It's party time. Yeah. Supposedly. So that's what for he, some guys. Yeah. Okay. Right. So <laughs> that's what he was trying to get rumor away from. Rumor has it, <laughs> Antoine Walker, and this is so vet savvy, took a couple of our young guys out to dinner before Game Three. <laughs> and coach found out about it, and they were on South Beach. And so it got back to him, and he's like, you know Avery, he's zero tolerance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all ain't focused, man. We going, let's get, get the boys. We going up here to the Marriott out here in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> you do a good Avery. We, we, we like, man, come on, coach. No, nah, y'all ain't focused. Get, come on. <laughs> and so at that point, we're like, oh, shit, here we go. So now we know we're in a dogfight. And, and then to be in Miami for, for what, a week and a half? I mean, that's just a long time to be away from home in the finals. And a lot of, it's our first finals. Like, it's yeah, my yeah, first time yeah. being at that stage. So, um, tough, tough, tough for a young ball club to go through. Um, but you learn from it, and, and, and it made us better. So, y'all, so he not only moved you up to Fort Lauderdale, but yep. get, made, said, y'all going to have roommates. Oh, yeah, y'all going to have roommates. And that had to be tough. The craziest one oh was gosh. me. I'm cool. I get along with everybody. Yeah. But the coldest roommate combination was Dirk and Daryl Armstrong. Oh, my God. <laughs> He made Dirk listen, because D.A., he listened to, to, he watched videos, one, and then two, he's listening to rap music the whole time. You know, Dirk barely, he don't really listen to rap. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, he got the music turned up. He got the speakers bumping. <laughs> so Dirk ain't really getting no rest. Oh, I mean, man. it was crazy, man. Wow. Uh, yeah, who it, who it was, was your funny. roommate? Uh, my roommate, I think I had uh, Dampier. Dampier okay. might have been right. He was So cool. he just assigned y'all. They call him Big Bear. He ain't doing nothing, man. He just chilling. Yeah, they assigned us roommates. Okay. He wasn't doing nothing. I'm reading the Bible or something, and he was uh, he was just on his phone or something. It was it was cool. So, wow. I mean, like I said, psychologically though, that kind of wears on the team. But I I see it though. Like for a coach, I'm gonna do whatever I need to do to get my team focused. Yeah. And if I gotta change hotels, you know, we're changing hotels. And so I, I applauded Avery for doing it. That was a bold move. Yeah. And uh, it had nothing to do with us how we performed. Uh, in those next couple wow. games. So you, when you went to Dallas from Atlanta, you replaced Steve Nash. People yes. might, might not remember that, but mm -hmm. he went to Phoenix as a free agent. You replaced him, and y'all got better. Yeah. Y'all went. I think they Shockingly. won 52 his last year. They won 58 your yep. year. Obviously, a couple years later, you in the finals. Yeah. Let me ask you this now. Nash goes to Mike D'Antoni in Phoenix, mm -hmm. and in last his last year in uh, Dallas, you know, 14 points, eight assists. People kind of felt like he was coming down a little mm -hmm. bit. That's why Cuban let him go. But with D'Antoni, he's in the perfect system for yes. him, I think. And obviously the rest is history. Mm -hmm. Two MVPs, Hall of Famer he's going to be. Do you feel like, let me ask, if you had played in a Mike D'Antoni system, Ooh. do you think, what do you think your career would have looked like? If in your prime, oh, you yeah. get to play for a Mike D'Antoni in his system, you got the ball in your hands. Would you have been the point, you think, bringing it down, the pick and roll, or would you have been one of the guys playing off the ball, shooting threes? I think I would have been – he would have had the luxury to allow me to do both. Uh, but at the same time, if Amari Stoudemire is the one setting the pick for me and he's rolling every time, I would have the ball in my hands. Because if you see my career in, in Dallas, the two-man game basketball, which you don't see a lot of today, yeah. is what Dirk and I thrived on. The pick and roll with me and him on the right side of the floor, you had to pick your poison. If I came off and you didn't show, I would pull up. If you showed too far out, I would drop it back to him. And that that, that was how we started our action. Okay. That's how we got the ball moving. We, we started action with our two best players, cause a reaction, and then we get the ball moving, and you'd have to rotate and, and, and fly around. And so um, D'Antoni's system is more predicated on – right now it's more ISO. With Nash, yeah, yeah. it was all about pick and roll. You know, Nash get downhill, cause a problem. Amari roll, cause another problem. Now we spray it out to the shooters if they rotate. If not, Amari gets the pass, 
he bangs out. Yep. If you switch, now that's when Ash did hit Nash. I just called him Ash. Nash <laughs> did his ISO thing. Yeah. And that was so hard to guard because he, 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 bar none, Steve Nash, Chris Paul, Isaiah Thomas, the uh, former yep. Isaiah Thomas. The legend. Yeah. Legend. Best handle. Kyrie Irving. Best I was going to say, I, I, Kyrie I think Kyrie got the Kyrie, best ever. Kyrie. Best handle. So you with Steph that Curry, best ever? Best handle. Those five. They okay. got the handle. It's on a string. You're not taking it from them. Yeah. And so I think Nash flourished. And if you look at Nash's career, too, when he left Dallas 14 and 8, we all talk about his stats. But look at the team. I mean, you brought in Antoine Jamison, Dirk, yeah. you had a lot of France, Michael Finley, Nick Van Neck. So you have more scores. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, now he goes to Phoenix where he's the primary ball handler. He's the guy. I mean, it was good because he had those athletes, too, now. Sean Marion was an athlete. He would get oh, yeah. out and run with the best of them. He was a gazelle. Uh, Stoudemire, a young Joe Johnson. Um, and then he had Tim Thomas. He had some guys that can fill it up and shoot. And, and that's what the Tony system is all about. Spread the floor with your shooters. A point guard that can handle and get mm -hmm. downhill and cause a problem. And, and that's why it was so effective. Now, you are a great shooter, great three-point shooter. But the most you've ever taken in a season mm -hmm. was six a game. Yep. And... I think it was Dallas. Yep. You averaged 19 that year, 19 and a half that yep. year. If you were in your prime playing today, where it's not unusual for somebody to average seven, eight, nine Man, threes a real. game, again, what, where do you think your career would have gone Man, we, if you're in your prime playing in this era? I mean, it, it would still be up there. I mean, I probably would have overtaken Ray Allen right now, but see, Because you're me, third in all time three yeah, pointers. I'm third. Man. I'm third. Reggie's second. And Ray is first, but for me, it's because over the span of my career, I played 19 years, and you got to remember, I'm one of the best mid-range jump shooters in the history of basketball. I pride myself on the mid-range jumper. Mm -hmm. I got taught by Iceman George Gervin. He he took me under his wing, and he told me. Now, when was that? This when was uh, my second year in the league. Uh, my mentor, uh, Jeff McCall, out of Detroit, grew up with Ice from that area, okay. took me down to San Antonio. I spent three days with Ice. And all we did was shoot mid-range jumpers. Wow. He would not allow me to shoot a three-point shot. And that's why I developed that aspect of my game. I always could shoot threes because I was either shoot threes or get layups. Yeah. But he developed my mid-range jumper, and I just fell in love with it. And it's just that little in-between shot that is just so hard to guard. Not many people they're, uh, they're trying. Some now. guys are trying to root that out. Yeah. Like D'Antoni doesn't want mid-range. But that's the thing. And when I got to Houston, uh, we had a, 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 dis disagreement, a disagreement. A conflict of philosophies. Yeah. <laughs> because my two is a layup. And that's what I used to tell him. My mid range is a layup. But he's like, yeah. no, we want layup, free throws, or threes. I'm like, come on, man, forget them analytics. And I think they heard me over say that too many times. <laughs> that's why I'm not back over there. But uh, that was a Daryl Morey thing. And so, again, me being in the systems I've been in over the last three years, Houston was the only team that really thrived off the three point shot. Milwaukee's really not that. Brooklyn really wasn't. Uh, Boston, we mixed it in, but okay. we really were take the best shot available. Well, that's why I want to act because the game is getting more and more yeah. and more three point you heavy. Have to, you have to be able to shoot that three point shot, even if you're a center. Do you think though it's is there a threshold where it can just be too many threes oh, that, yeah. that messes up the game? I'm 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 from the era of good threes. We need good threes. Don't just come down jacking up a shot. I want my threes taken off ball movement. Um, Two or three passes, boom, they rotate, they don't close out. That's a good three for okay. me. But when guys close out, he's in your face, the step back three, to me that's a low percentage shot. The three-point shot on an average in the NBA is what, 34, 35%? Yep. And, and, and see what the analytics tell you is th the reason, they say if you hit 33% of your threes, yep. That's like 50% from two. From two. That's why they always promote, right. you know what I'm saying? But the thing is, you have to hit 33% yeah. of them, right? Because if you don't. You can't fall under 31, 32. That's what the analytics won't tell you. And then, like you said, some of these threes guys are taking now is the step back three, the pump fake oh, yeah. side step. These are very difficult shots under duress. I'm more of on, on efficiency. I'm more of a guy that let me shoot 40 to 45% from three. Now we're cooking with fish grease. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. Because I thought yeah, I thought in game seven, Boston-Cleveland, 
Oh. I thought both of them were playing lazy ball and just trying to hit home runs from three, yep. especially Boston. Hero though. ball. Hero yep. ball. Bo- Boston really got away from their identity. They played out of character, and they played more as if they were on the road mm-hmm. uh, because if you've looked at them on the road, they shoot a low percentage from three because they're taking bad threes. Early in the shot clock, off no pass, mm-hmm. contested three-point jump shots, and they fell into that, and they thought just because they were at home, and this is a young team, they would still be able to take and make those shots. Those shots didn't fall for them, and that's why they're sitting at home right now. Now, what um, what advice would you give to a young player coming into the NBA about what pitfalls to avoid? Uh, the number one pitfall to avoid for a young guy coming in is to don't be content with just being here. Uh, when you get here, obviously you have the talent. That's why we drafted you. But you need to continue to develop, continue to work on your weaknesses, but rely on your strengths. Don't come in and just try to, oh, I see LeBron doing this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me put that in my game. <laughs> no, that's not why we drafted you. <laughs> we drafted you because X. We need you to do that well and be a specialist. I think that's the other thing we get lost at when we come into this game is, you know, guys trying to work on this part of the game, that part of the game. But, again, the sooner you find out what your specialty is in this game, the more longevity you will have. And I mm-hmm. think that's where I've been able to sustain uh, the level of play for myself is, is because once I got to a certain point, I knew I wasn't a starter anymore. I knew I could start. Yeah. But if I accepted my role and became the best six man I could be, then I would last longer. And I think that's the number one advice I can give. One of your young teammates in Milwaukee, Sterling Brown, yes. he just had the incident where he got tased by police. Have you talked to him since then? Or? Yes, I have definitely have. And, again, when he got tased, people don't think – they think he got tased yesterday when the video came out. This happened in January. Yeah. And he came to practice. And Sterling is a headstrong, young, confident, strong, young black man. And when he's at practice, he's going to let you know that, yeah. too. <laughs> and so part of me, when he showed up that day, was beat up. He was bruised. I'm thinking he got into an altercation at a bar or something. I didn't know the police had used excessive force yeah. and, and really bodily harmed this young man. Because, again, I'm thinking about the Sterling Brown I see every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, I tell yeah. you something, you snap back at me. Yeah. So I'm like, man, what did you do, brother? What's going on? He's like, nah, bro. It wasn't right, man. They did me wrong, man. I, I, I didn't do nothing. Ah, right, man, I don't know about that, Sterling. Well, what really happened? Man, just wait till the tape come out. Okay, I'm going to give you that. I'm going to wait and see. And so I, I didn't rush to judgment. I waited and I looked and I seen what I saw on tape, and that officer was very wrong. Mm-hmm. At the least, I'm double parked. I'm in a handicapped spot. You can give me a ticket, ask me to move my vehicle. That's it. Yep. You can defuse that yep. situation very easily, and we would not be having this conversation. But because you felt some type of way, because of your badge, gave you authority, you abused that authority. Mm-hmm. And so now we have a discussion that we've been having uh, right now in society for the last four or five years mm-hmm. that has been going on. You know as oh, well yeah. as I do yeah. in our community yep. forever. Yep. I think it's even lessened. The yeah. only reason we see it is because of the camera phones and everything. Because of social media yeah, if it wasn't and for camera that, phones. We wouldn't know, people wouldn't know what was going on. We, we wouldn't know what was going on, man, and it's been a huge injustice. And for me, again, I always err on the side of, I always look at myself first. What could I have done in a situation like that to defuse it? Mm-hmm. If I was Sterling and I'm in that situation, officer, I'm very sorry. Can I move my vehicle? Da, da, da. But everybody's not like me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everybody didn't grow up like I grew up. You see what I'm saying? And I grew up in the inner city, but I've, I've lived it. I've seen it. Yeah. And I know how to handle it. But it takes a mature individual. You're talking about a rookie in the NBA from Chicago, yeah, yeah, the south yeah, side. Yeah. <laughs> so he's tired. He's seen that happen over and oh, over yeah. again. He's tired. And I watched that video. That young man did nothing wrong in that instance. No, no. Well, we, I mean, Thibocephalosha, remember he got this fibula, Another fibula broken yep. by the police. Have you ever had incidents where, you know. Ooh, I've been on the good been, side of the law. Yeah. T- I told you, boy, I was schooled at a young age. Boy, anything go down. Listen, hey, officer. Change the voice and everything. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry. I know I was going over the limit. Let me, uh, here's my ID, my, my insurance and everything. Uh, I don't need any problems. I just want to get home. Yeah. I had one instance when I first got drafted, um, driving home 
I'm driving to Atlanta with my wife and my daughter in the back seat. Had a firearm in the trunk. I'm driving my S430 Benz, paper tags, going about 85. I'm just, a, I've been in a Honda. I don't know how fast <laughs> the Benz go. I'm riding whew, down the highway. I'm going feeling down 85. Man, feeling good down 85. Roof, the lights hit. I'm like, oh. Then I looked. I said, oh, yeah. I, man, I'm doing 80. That's too fast. I pull over. Officer comes up. Nap on the window. I see your license and registration. Give him my license. You know I could be on CNN right now, right? I guess. I mean, you didn't know what he's talking about. I didn't know what he's talking yeah. about. He said, you got anything in the car I need to see? I said, man, sir, I'm traveling with my kids and we're moving. We just got drafted to the NBA. I got a firearm in the back. It's registered. I have a license, gun permit. Yeah, I don't care about none of that, but I could be on CNN right now. About five other cars pulled up right behind me. And I was just looking like, oh, snap. It's about to go down. I said, I'm going to let you off with a warning. All your, your paperwork, your registered, everything checked out. Your gun is registered. Have a nice day. But all I remember was I could be on CNN. Now, what that meant, he, but I he don't said, know. But it sounds like it's a threat. Like, right. I could go off on Right. Yeah. And so if I didn't, like I said, if I hadn't been properly schooled, and this came from my mother, she's so like, any situation like that, you just act respectful. And if you know you're not in the wrong, it all come out in the light. And so, um, you know, just leaning on that experience. I was calm. I was collective. I told him what I had. I was honest. And, 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 you know, nothing, nothing And he never happened. recognized who you were? No, nah, he never recognized Have me. you had situations where you've been stopped and then they were, oh, you Jason Terry. Oh, and it's man, all the time. Brother, yeah. I mean, thank you. Well, thank you, Dallas Police Department, because I've been late to practice so many times, and I'm on the tollway, and I'm smashing out. I get pulled over. So, hey, Mr. Terry, appreciate what you did in 2011. Man, you know, hey, just slow down a little bit, man. Going about to yeah, 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 yeah. So it, it's worked out too. Have you told players and since all this stuff has come out in the last several years? Mm -hmm. Have you told any of your teammates, young players, like had those talks? Like, look, this how, I know you got your pride, but this is how you should handle yourself with the police. Just well, get home. This is where the MBPA to me does not get enough credit because we've had so many seminars where they come in and they'll bring in police officers from the city mm -hmm. that will have this discussion and this conversation. Their number one rule is anything after 2 a.m., you just might as well hand them your stuff and tell them, hey, officer, I'm sorry, here you go. That's the best advice they can give you because anything after 2 a.m., he's telling you, as an officer, I'm already thinking, thinking you're, you're in the wrong. It's yeah. something going on because, again, now, we can say you should be, but we don't know. Everybody got their mm -hmm. own life. But after 2 a.m., nothing but trouble happens. Mm -hmm. And so my advice to these guys in those meetings is listen to what they're telling you because they are right. You know, you're never, you're never right when it comes to dealing with law enforcement because when they stop you, hey, they stopped you for a reason. Mm -hmm. Wrong or right, you're not going to win that battle. Mm -hmm. What do you, um, what do you want? So you want to play next year? No doubt about it. And it's about, about championships. Like, is, is it about championships or more you, just you know what? the it, money? For, or? for me, at this point in my career, it's about the impact I can have in the locker room and on the court. Okay. Wherever so that may be. It's a young team. It's a young okay. team. And, and so I know my impact with a championship team obviously could lead me to another championship. I have one. I want mm -hmm. another one, yes. Mm -hmm. But if I can do that with a young team, like, for instance, like a Milwaukee, that would mean so much more to my legacy. Um, my impact was felt great in Houston because I had a young James Harden where he was able to sit next to me and lean on my experiences and I felt I was able to share those experiences with him and it would elevate his game mm -hmm. and now I'm starting to see it I'm not there but I can watch from here like a proud big brother yeah. uh, because I see some of the things he's doing out there and those are some of directly because of some of the conversations he and I had um, and so being able to do that with a Giannis with yeah. Chris Middleton with Eric Bledsoe uh, that's where I see my value is at. Also, also I like to be with a coaching staff that is kind of young where I can go in and learn from because my passion uh, inside of me, I know I'll be a coach in okay. this game when I'm done. I also like broadcasting. Broadcasting <laughs> is good. It comes natural. I watch brothers like you who are well-spoken and are very knowledgeable about sports uh, right. because not only basketball, but I'm a football fanatic. Okay. So I love all, sp uh, all sports, boxing. I love boxing. I love golf. And so we're watching brothers like you, how you speak, how you uh, – you know, articulate your points to the public, but are still re relatable to young bro brothers like myself. You, uh, it's very powerful. 
Thank you. So Milwaukee's a, the, where you want to go back. Milwaukee, Sound like Milwaukee, it. because of what we've built, uh, Jason. I know his 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 dream and and what the culture and changing uh, the culture there. Uh, what we've done the last two years yeah. has been phenomenal to me, and I want to see that see that process end. Um, but hey, whoever wants to give me the opportunity, right, it, it right. would be a and blessing. And coaching soon. Yeah, coach, you, coaching real soon. Now, Mark Jackson felt like he wanted to go straight to being a head coach. Yes. When he can, do you feel that way, or I you feel you want to? Which, now he was adamant, like I'm not going to be an assistant. What's your view? I, I can honestly tell you that. I am prepared to step in and be a head coach if that opportunity is presented to me. But I'm not against being somebody's associate head or sitting next to him on that mm -hmm. bench and being able to give him the experience, uh, let, allow him to learn from the experiences that I've had and me learn from him and then still have the respect level from my uh, peers. You know, that, that, that's the big thing about coaching. Um, you know, you can draw up the X's and O's and all that's great. But if you don't have the respect of that locker room, mm -hmm. you're not going to do too that's well. That's the main thing. That is Cause the main thing. Because am I correct in saying, I mean, every NBA coach knows X's and O's. He has to. It's just the respect. You're not going to be an a NBA coach if you're not qualified to do the X's mm -hmm. and O's. You know, but them players, them, them 12 to 15 guys in that locker room, if they can look you in your eyes and what you tell them, they honestly believe it and go out there and put in the hard work and dedication into your system mm -hmm. uh, for one common goal, then you'll be a good coach. I think you'd be a great coach, man, oh, and man. I'm, I'm looking forward to I didn't know that was your goal, yes, so sir. I'm looking forward to seeing you on yes, the sir. sidelines one day mm -hmm. and in the booth, too, yeah. uh, here at FS1. But it's great to have you on In The Zone, man. man. Thanks for the great stories, and uh, thank you. In The Appreciate Zone. It. <laughs>